In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how to customize special effects that are available for titles in recent versions of PowerDirector. We'd like to show you a short example of one of those special effects for titles, and then we'll show you some techniques. In order to apply some special effects to titles, I need to get into my Title Designer. I can highlight my title and either press the F2 key or double click. Either will get me to my Title Designer. If I look in the panel on the left, I have all my control categories. One thing to notice before you apply a special effect to a title is that it's incompatible with some other things you can control. For example, if you click on the Animation tab and you try to apply an in or out animation to a title where a special effect has been applied, you'll get a message that will tell you, we'll, we'll do this, but we need to remove the special effect. So you cannot animate with in and out animation and have a special effect on your title at the same time. You'll also get a similar error message when you do some keyframing in terms of position and scale with a title where a special effect has been applied. Again, your choice is one or the other. You can't do both. So let's look at some of the special effects that are available. I'm going to click on the arrow and open up that sub panel. And I find that I have six different types of title special effects. Let's look at each of them. I'm going to click on fire to start with. And we find what we would expect, a nice flame on our fire. Now if I drag down, I find that I have three different controls for fire. I have one called looks. Think of a look simply as a preset. I have six different presets of the types of fire I can use. If I click on look number two, now I have something that's kind of a blue-green. Look number three gives me a, one that's a very different both in color and style. Look number four is more of an, an electric. Number five is a fire, but it's a more fragmented fire. And look number six is much like look number one. Now in each case, I have these two sliders. What do they do? If I take the size and I drag it to the right, you notice what happens. The flame gets taller. So this controls the height of the flame. You notice if I move slowly that the f flame is actually curling around the letters. It's not straight up and down. But the, that's what the size does when I change the size. The density, basically, is a control of how much horizontal fire I see. If I go way down on the low spectrum, like a 6, you notice it seems to be l much less prominent, and it doesn't touch the full width of every letter. When I drag my density slider to the right, then we see every segment of every letter lit up quite a bit. So that's what the density slider does. And again, you can apply these sliders individually to any of the six looks that you have, and you can adjust them accordingly. So you can modify these presets to fit the design that you want. So that is our fire option. Let's look at the lights option. Well, the lights one is a fun one. The lights one actually has six different presets or looks as well. And you notice here as we freeze the frame, the first one is a square. Now the lights here have a head. That's the object that moves around the shape of the letter. And then it has a tail. And so you have control over each of them. And each of these looks gives you a different kind of head and a slightly different tail. But the big feature is the head. Let's look at the head first of all. Now here we have a head color that's pink. I'm going to change that. Let's change it from pink to a purple. I'll click on OK. And you notice now, as we look at this, we have the same shape of the head, but it's a different color. It's a purple head. And we have a tail. Let's change the tail color. Let's change the tail color to yellow. Click on OK. And now we have a purple head and a yellow tail. 
You can also control the opacity of either one. If you dial them down, they become virtually invisible. You can control the size of the head, which is interesting. Now here we have a square. I'm going to dial it up, take my slider, and now, now you see the size and shape of it very clearly as it moves around the letter. And so that's the head size, head color, tail size, tail color, and opacity. Again, we have different looks, and each one is controlled independent. Here's look number two. Here's number three, which is a bit of an octagon. Number four, when we look at the head, it's a bit of a circle. And again, if I, if I take the head size and I increase it up, you see we have a circle with a bit of a star in the center for number four. And we look at number five. Five is mostly a, a dot, and again, we can change the tail color and the head color independently, one of another. There's my tail, and I still have my green head, where I can take the head color and maybe turn it to orange. And we have a different combination. It still outlines my letter. So that's a fun one, the lights one. Let's look at the lightning one. When it comes to the lightning, it looks like electricity to me in most cases, but you, here you have simply a length, a size, and a color. And I'll go back to, let's take a white this time, and let's change the size and see what that changes. It becomes much more apparent, much more wide, and the length, let's turn the length way down, and again, I think that affects a little bit about the uh, horizontal frequency of it. But so you can adjust all of these features. And again, we have six different options in terms of default looks. You can take any of them and customize them. In this case here, it, it basically goes around the letter and it starts to, to outline the letter, the, the look of the letter in lightning. Let's look at our LED option. The LED is another fun one. The LED basically has six looks as well, and you can pick the one you like. Uh, most of them are, are, are similar. There's a, a dot with something in the center that's a bit hollow look on number five. On uh, number six is two circles. Number two is a, some pretty tiny dots. And so we have all these options. Let's look at this one a moment. What I'd like to do is look at density. If I drag the density back, it's the thickness, the, the distance between the dots is less when I adjust that here. Again, I can take the color, turn it to anything in the spectrum. We can make them pink. And now we see that's our LED lights. Again, we can do opacity. We can change the size. So you can make some very interesting modifications here when it comes to the LED neon sign, all the way from very, very small uh, to very large. So those are those are some of the variations in that you can apply in customizing LED. Neon is the next one. Neon basically outlines the text and that's a bit of a cool one. We have six looks or presets for neon again. And we'll just illustrate some of them here. Now this one's offset. I don't know if I like that one. Those are some of the differences in the neon. <clears throat> you also have opacity. You can change the color. You can change the size. From very small to super large. Let's look at the wave. This is an electronic wave. It basically outlines the letters again. You have an, another tool here in this one called period, another one called length. The period for me is the opposite of what I think. The lower the number, the, the more it outlines the letter. The higher the number, the slower it crawls around the word. All the way to if you go to the top, you can it doesn't move very far at all or very fast at all. So that's how you control the speed at which this particular effect moves around the letters that you have. And once again, in the wave, you have multiple looks for multiple variations of the wave. Quite a bit of difference. 
Let me go back to the lights one and I'd like to show you something else that you can do to customize. If we turn on our keyframes, we find that for all of these, we can vary what goes on in terms of each of the, these elements. Here, for example, I can t change my tail color. I'm going to go to the first frame and lo look at what I have here right now. The tail color is blue. So let's go in a few seconds and I'm going to change the tail color to orange. And what that actually does is it changes the color from one to another. I'm going to take the head size and at this point I'm going to make it very small. I'll move back in my keyframes. We have lessons on keyframing if you want to learn more about that. And I'll set another keyframe at the beginning and now I'll make the head size huge. So what happens as we begin to play this is the color changes and the size of the head changes. You can also change opacity and anything basically that you can control on the left side. I don't know if I'd use these a lot, but it's interesting to know that they are available and you can make all these modifications in time as you seek to make your titles very interesting and very unique using these special effects. So that's a bit of an overview on how to customize some of the special effects available in titles in CyberLink PowerDirector.